Well, hello, friends, and happy Friday, and welcome to the final edition of First Peter's Good News Today. We finished up our walk through the text yesterday. And what I wanted to do today was just give you some summary thoughts on it and perhaps tee up some things we can discuss on Wednesday at our Zoom call together about First Peter and our First Peter party. Uh, remember, on the next week, you'll get devotionals from um, the staff and various topics, and then in a week, join me again back on a Monday, the 22nd of February. We're going to jump into Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and we're going to go through the end of chapter 3, and it's very foundational for our Christian faith, and I cannot wait. So much scripture, so little time. Okay, lessons from First Peter for me. Uh, there are many. And I'll just tee these up and perhaps we can discuss them. The first is that that whole concept of us being elect aliens. This really hit me hard. I remember I started recording this in the summertime and then in the fall when culture was heating up and, and a lot was going on. And it became more and more apparent to me how we as Christians, the more we walk in our faith, are going to really have a hard time um, living in both worlds. And it was just affirming to me and confirming that at the beginning of Peter's letter, he calls them elect exiles or elect aliens. And at the end of Peter's letter, he says the church in Babylon, same concept. And he really had this urgency to tell his congregation, look, you guys can't fit in. Rome is a polytheistic, um, sexually indulgent, out of control culture. And you don't, you don't belong there. You're there, but you don't belong. And so I think as I was teaching through this, and especially in, back in the fall, it really hit me hard of how we are to not cozy up to culture. We're to be in the world, as Jesus said, but not of it. The second big lesson for me um, came a lot in the fall, too, in light of the election coming and how much hope people were putting on the election to preserve and protect our Christian way of life, our perceived Christian way of life and our rights and as Americans. The second lesson was how much Peter urged his congregation and his audience not to put any hope in the world at all. And that may be a little depressing to some of you, but it's a really great word. As so many of us were like, if, if I'll just be honest, if, if Trump can just win the election, everything will be great. Other people, if Biden can just win the election, it'll be great. And that's never been our hope, either one. Um, we serve a king and we live in a kingdom and the king rules and reigns regardless of what's going on around us. But Peter, couldn't they couldn't look at Congress passing new laws or the stock market rebounding, rebounding or a vaccine to wipe out COVID. And they, they certainly couldn't look to a change of leadership in Rome to suddenly make the government their friend. Peter says to them over and over again, look, the only friend you have is in the Lord Jesus and in his grace and his mercy. That's the only hope you have. Set your eyes on him and quit looking at culture to fix your problems because culture is not going to fix your problems. You live in Babylon. That was a really big word to me in the fall, especially teaching up toward the election and, and so many people writing me and saying, you've got to get more involved in the election and you've got to do more to promote this candidate and this and that. And First Peter's telling me we got nothing down here. We are hopes in the gospel. That was huge for me. And the third lesson is just the word of God. Um, I've, I've done studies like this before. This is the first time I've taught so exclusively just through one book, as literally as I've tried to do it word by word if I could. And I have, in First Peter and other places, discovered so much depth to God's Word. And I, I think there were some moments when I shared that with you throughout this thing, that, man, what, what riches to the Word of God and what multifaceted levels. And the more you dig in it, the more you push on it, the more you find and then where you, you pull here, stuff starts moving over here because it's all connected. I've been, I've been re, re-inspired by the, the beauty of God's Word and the power of the inspiration of God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit to work through God's Word, and I hope you have too. It's been a great experience for me. So let's talk about some of that stuff on Wednesday. I love you guys a ton. I appreciate it. Write me at seniorpastor at acfellowship.org and tell me how this has worked for you. And um, I'll see you in a week with a big jump into Genesis 1. Lord, thanks for the successful study. Thanks for walking us through a great book. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you in a week.